Uh, welcome to this, the first lecture in our course on transport processes. Uh, so, this is a core course for uh, uh, engineers from many departments including chemical engineering, materials, science, biochemical and so on. And this forms one of the basic courses in our understanding of material transformations, how materials transform from raw materials to finished products. My name is V. Kumaran, I am at the Department of Chemical Engineering at the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore and I will be teaching this course. Today I will start our course at the very basics and that is dimensional analysis. The objective of our study is to be able to predict certain outcomes based upon certain conditions that are applied as far as material transformations are concerned. And for this we basically derive relationships between different quantities. Each quantity has what is called a dimension and a unit. The dimension is a measure of a quantity okay. and the unit is what is called a standard for measurement. Okay. So, for example, for a quantity there can be only one dimension. For example, the uh, distance traveled there is one dimension and that is length. You can have different units for the same quantity. For example, you, uh, the, the, the unit of distance could be in meters, in centimeters, in kilometers etcetera, but the dimension is the same and that is length. Okay. Uh, the reason we have different units is because in different applications uh, it is more convenient to use different kinds of units okay, for the same quantity. Each quantity has one dimension and it could have multiple units. Uh, though there are multiple units for standardization as a part of this course we will use primarily what are called SI units. Okay. SI unit is an international convention okay, and these units are considered to be the standard units for different dimensions. Yeah. So, throughout the course to the extent possible we will work only with this SI system of units. Now, dimensions can be derived into two categories. Okay. One is called fundamental and the other is called derived. Okay. These fundamental dimensions are chosen by convention. Okay. There is subjectivity in how you select what is fundamental and what is derived. By convention, uh, a certain set of six dimensions are chosen to be fundamental dimension. Okay. Uh, the first one is mass and the SI unit of that mass is kilogram, okay. length, the SI unit of this meter, okay. time, second is the SI unit for time and then there are three other dimensions, four is temperature and the unit for this is either Kelvin or degree centigrade. Okay. Uh, we could use Kelvin or degree centigrade. Kelvin is used for thermodynamic quantities where you know you are referencing to absolute 0. Uh, degree centigrade is used whenever 
um, in our everyday life when we refer to the temperatures and so on. An increment of 1 Kelvin is exactly the same as an increment of 1 degree centigrade. Okay. So, far as, as far as increments are concerned, the two are the same. Only the 0 reference is different. 0 degree centigrade is the temperature commonly used temperature at which ice melts, whereas 0 degrees Kelvin is absolute 0, thermodynamic absolute 0. Okay. So, we can use as far as temperature increments are concerned, we can use these interchangeably. Okay. The fifth one is amperes, a unit of current. Okay. Uh, uh, so, the, the dimension, I should be careful here, the dimension is current and the unit is in amperes and finally, there is one relating to uh, light intensity and the SI unit for this is candela. Okay. So, these are the 6 fundamental dimensions. Okay. Uh, we will come back and discuss the derived dimensions a little later and how you derive the uh, these derived dimensions from the fundamental dimensions. Okay. So, throughout the course I will use dimension m as mass, L as length, T as time. Okay. So, these are the dimensions. The units in SI units are kilogram meter second. In other kinds of units you could have for example, grams for mass or centimeter for uh, length and so on. Okay. The temperature I will use the capital Greek letter theta to represent that okay, because I have already used T for time. Okay and current I will use A. Okay. Light intensity is something that we will not be concerned with in this course, so I will not uh, uh, define the dimension, but these are the dimensions that I will use. The most used dimensions will be mass, length, time and temperature. Okay. Mass, length and time for mechanical quantities, temperature is also used for thermal quantities. When we come across electrical quantities, we will use current as well, okay, but mass, length, time and temperature are those that we will use most commonly. So, the dimension of derived quantities can be <coughs> determined from the dimension for the fundamental quantities. Okay. And those are uh, obtained by considering some relationship in which these fundamental quantities and derived quantities are present. Okay. So, let us go through some derived quantities. So, first thing is the dimension of velocity. Velocity is the distance travelled per unit time. Okay. It could be in meters per second, kilometers per hour or other such quantities. Okay. Distance by time. Okay. And therefore, it has dimensions of distance divided by the dimension of time. Okay. It has a dimension of distance divided by the dimension of time, length by t okay. or I will write this as L t inverse. Okay. Angular velocity. Angular velocity is the change in angle per unit time. Okay, the angular velocity is the change in angle per unit time, usually in terms of radians. Okay. So, the angle for example of, uh, uh, okay. if you go once around a point, the total angle that you go is 2 times pi, okay, where pi is 3.14, etcetera. Okay. So, this angle in radians is basically Okay, the ratio of the distance travelled divided by the radius. Okay. The angle in radians is the distance travelled divided by the radius. The dimension of an angle is the dimension of distance divided by dimension of radius. Distance and dimension have the same, uh, distance and radius have the same dimension and therefore, angle is dimensionless. This is just a number, it has no dimension. 
okay, pi, 2 pi, etcetera. Uh, this angle I am always representing in radians. One should note that angle is often represented in degrees. So, 360 degrees is often is often written as 2 pi radians. During the course, I will exclusively work with radians which is dimensionless. So, angle is dimensionless. Okay, so, let us just write that down here. angular velocity is the change in angle per unit time okay the difference in the, ang uh, the, the 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 change in angle divided by unit time which will have dimension of inverse time because angle is dimensionless and the uh, rate of change of angle per unit time will have dimensions of inverse time okay acceleration is the rate of change of velocity okay the change in velocity divided by time change in velocity has dimensions of length per unit time okay the change in velocity is a difference between two velocities it is the um, uh, has dimensions of length per time therefore acceleration has dimensions of length t power minus 2 velocity divided by time okay so that is the dimension of acceleration force which is mass into acceleration okay this will be equal to m l t power minus 2 okay. torque okay. the torque on an object is equal to the force times the distance from the center of rotation of the object okay so, this has dimensions of force into distance okay, which will be m l square t power minus 2. Okay. Work done is also equal to force into distance okay, force times the distance traveled is the work done. Okay. This is also force into distance is equal to m l square t power minus 2. Okay. Energy has the same dimension as work. Okay. So, energy has the same dimension as work m l square t power minus 2. All types of energy have the same dimension whether it is kinetic energy, potential energy or in thermodynamics the internal energy, enthalpy, uh, Helmholtz free energy and so on. Okay. And uh, the, the, the unit, the SI unit of energy which will be SI unit of mass times length square by t power minus 2. Okay. So, this will be kg meter square per second square. This is what is called a joule. Okay. And the unit of force which is mass into acceleration kg meter per second square which is referred to as a Newton. Okay. So, these are the uh, units that are commonly used for these quantities. Okay. Power okay, is the rate of change of energy, okay, the rate at which work is done. Okay. That is the work done per unit time is the power. Okay. This is equal to work done per time. Okay. So, it has the dimensions of work divided by the dimensions of time which is m l square t power minus 3. Okay. In SI units this will be kg meter square second power minus 3. This is called a watt. Okay. Uh, watt is the dimension of um, uh, power. Okay. Let us look at some other commonly used mechanical quantities. Okay. Pressure is equal to force per area, force exerted per unit area. Okay. This has dimensions of force m 
L t power minus 2 divided by area which is length square. Dimension of length is length, dimension of area is length square, dimension of volume is length cubed. Okay. And the dimension of this is therefore equal to m L inverse t power minus 2 okay, okay, which is in SI units this is equal to kg per meter per second square. This is what is called a Pascal okay, okay, as far as pressure is concerned 1 kg per meter per second square. Okay. Density which is equal to mass per unit volume which will be m l power minus 3 mass per unit volume is m l power minus 3. Okay. Concentration has the same unit density is total mass per unit volume concentration of a material is concentration of the mass of that particular constituent okay, in a solution for example per unit volume but the dimension is the same mass per volume which is m l power minus 3. Now, let us come uh, look at the dimensions of some quantities that we will be using in our discussion of transport processes. Okay. So, I will start off with what is called a mass flux. Mass flux across a surface, okay, if I have some surface, okay, surface S say okay, and there is some mass transport across that surface okay, due to diffusion say, then the mass flux is mass transported per unit area per unit time. It is the mass flux is the mass transported per unit area per unit time. Okay. So, therefore, the dimension of this mass flux has to be the dimension of mass okay. area uh, length square. So, L power minus 2 T inverse okay. M L power minus 2 T inverse. Okay. So, that is the dimension of mass flux. Dimension of diffusion coefficient okay. the dimension of diffusion coefficient has to be obtained from some relationship which contains this diffusion coefficient. Okay. The symbol that is used for the mass flux is usually the symbol J. Okay. So, I will use the symbol J for the mass flux. How do we find out the dimension of the diffusion coefficient? Okay. So, if I have some cubic volume okay, this cubic volume within the fluid okay, across this okay, let us say this volume has a height um, delta z I okay, will call delta z as the height of this cubic volume okay, and there is a difference in concentration between the two sides okay, there is a difference in concentration between the two sides. Okay delta C okay, of some particular constituent of that material. The de, if the concentration at this surface is C, the concentration at this surface is C plus delta C. Okay. When, you, when there is a concentration diffusion because of transport there will be an equal equalization of the concentration from the surface with a higher concentration to the surface with the lower concentration there is going to be a flux of material because you have imposed this difference in concentration okay. and that flux of material is given by minus the diffusion coefficient times delta C by delta Z. Okay. So, the difference in concept the, the flux generated due to this transport due to this difference in concentration J is equal to minus the D times delta C by delta Z negative sign because mass is transported from regions of higher concentration 
two regions of lower concentration. Okay. And when there is this transport you get a flux. Now in a relationship of this kind the dimensions of quantities on the left and the right have to be equal. Okay. The dimension of the quantities on the left and the right have to be equal. Only then can you compare these two. Okay. You can only compare quantities with the same dimension. Okay. So therefore we require that the dimension of the quantities on the left and the right are equal. That is the dimension of J is equal to the dimension of D the dimension of delta C divided by the dimension of delta Z. Okay. So this is the dimensional consistency requirement using which we can determine the dimension of this diffusion coefficient. Okay. Substituting the dimensions for these, okay, substituting the dimensions for these and the concentration here okay. m L power minus 2 T inverse is equal to the dimension of D m L power minus 3 divided by L. Okay. And you can easily verify the mass dimensions will cancel out okay. and ultimately I will get okay, L square T inverse is equal to the dimension of the diffusion coefficient. Note that I will use these angular brackets here to indicate dimension of okay, when I go through this analysis. These angular brackets here indicate that this is the dimension of this particular quantity. Okay. Okay. So from this relation, uh, this relation will be familiar to many of you as Fick's law of diffusion. We will come back later and discuss this in further detail. Okay. But from this Hick's law of diffusion, we get the dim dimension of the diffusion coefficient as d is equal to L square t inverse. Okay. So basically if you have an unknown quantity, you have to find some relation which contains that quantity and other known quantities. Okay. And from that you can determine what is the dimension. Okay. So the dimension coefficient of the diffusion coefficient is length square t inverse. Okay. Now let us look at, uh, so these are flux, uh, the concentration and the diffusion coefficient are all related to mass transport. Let us look at some quantities related to heat transfer. Okay. The first thing is the specific heat. Okay. It is often written as Cp at constant pressure or Cv at constant volume. Both of these have the same dimension. Okay. At constant pressure, the specific heat times the temperature difference is related to the change in enthalpy of the system. Okay. Delta H is equal to M. Cp delta T. Okay. The change in enthalpy of a system due to a change in temperature delta T is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the temperature difference. Okay. So of obviously for dimensional consistency the left and the right sides have to have the same dimension. Okay. The left and the right sides have the same dimension. Enthalpy is an energy. Okay. Enthalpy is an energy mass okay, length square t power minus 2. Okay. Mass length square t power minus 2 is force into distance, force is ml t power minus 2 which is mass times acceleration okay, is equal to the mass times the dimension of specific heat times the dimension of temperature you recall I had written that as capital theta. So from this I can find out what is the dimension of the specific heat okay, is equal to L square T power minus 2 theta inverse. Okay. L square T power minus 2 theta inverse is the dimension of specific heat. Okay. It is written in various forms, it is sometimes written as joules per kg per Kelvin or joules per kg per degree centigrade. Okay. 
So, that is the thermal quantity the specific heat. Another thermal quantity is the heat flux. Okay. Recall that I said that the mass flux was the mass transported per unit area per unit time. Okay. So, the heat flux is the heat transported per unit area per unit time. The heat energy transported per unit area per unit time is the heat flux. So, the dimension of heat flux is calculated from the dimension of energy transported per unit area per unit time. The symbol Q is often used for the heat flux is equal to an energy. Okay. Energy is m L square T power minus 2 divided by unit area which is L square divided by time which is T. Okay. Therefore, the dimension of heat flux is m T power minus 3. Okay. So, that is the dimension of heat flux. So, specific heat, heat flux thermal conductivity. is obtained from a relation which contains thermal conductivity and other quantities whose dimensions are known. That relationship is what is called Fourier's law. of conduction okay. that is q is equal to minus k delta t by delta z. Configuration is the same as that we had for mass transfer. Take a slab of height delta z across which there is a temperature difference delta t. Okay. So, the temperature at the bottom phase is T, then the temperature at the top phase will be T plus delta T. Due to this temperature difference, there is going to be heat transfer. That heat transfer from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. The flux of heat transferred, that is the heat transferred per unit area per unit time, is going to be equal to the, uh, is directly proportional to the temperature difference as the temperature difference increases the flux increases and it is inversely proportional to the distance delta z. Okay. That proportionality quant constant is k. The negative sign again because the heat is transferred from higher temperature to lower temperature. Therefore, the dimension of the heat flux has got to be equal to the dimension of k, the dimension of delta t divided by the dimension of delta z. The dimension of heat flux I just got for you m t power minus 3 is equal to the dimension of the thermal conductivity. The dimension of temperature difference is theta and this is L the dimension of distance okay. which means that the dimension of the thermal conductivity is equal to m L t power minus 3 theta inverse. Okay, so, that is the dimension of heat flux. Okay, so, I have talked about dimensions of quantities related to mass transfer and dimensions of quantities relating to heat transfer. Okay. Uh, in the next lecture, I will uh, talk about quantities relating to momentum transfer that is the stress, the viscosity as well as other quantities like surface tension and so on. And after that, we will look at some uh, problems for deriving dimensions. So, I will continue this in the next lecture, I will see you then.